the Rebels, Crags. Let's keep going. The significant ins and outs. I'll take the ins and outs. I've got yeah. Moses Sarobi and Matt Phillip as their two big ins. Sarobi for the depth at nine more than anything, but Matt Phillip is just going to be probably their best forward this year. I think hands down their best forward this year. He's a freak. He's a very talented player and obviously a Wallabies mainstay. It'll be interesting to see how he bounces back from being really shoved aside in the uh, Northern Hemisphere tour for the Wallabies last year. I think he's got a real point to prove to make sure that he's not uh, left behind in that international scene. And, and, and he's going to play a really important role, like leadership role in this Rebel site. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not only is he going to be the leadership, he's going to have to carry, like he's going to have to lead the carries and things like that. Mm. Oh, he'll, he'll be a huge name for them. Yeah. The outs, there's a lot. Uh, again, as we've said throughout this podcast, make sure you keep your eye out on draftrugby.com for the entire list of all this stuff. It's all there so you can wade through it and pick and choose what you care about. But Lucio Sordoni, loved watching him play the Argentinian. Very good prop. Frank Lamar. Excellent Fijian number nine. Dane Hallett Petty slash wing, yeah, for Lamani. Dane Hallett Petty sadly had to retire because of concussion. I think we can all say that he was Australia's version of Ben Smith. Never quite got to the same level, obviously, but geez, he was a good player. Uh, Isti Nasarani, huge loss. And on his day, could be one of the best on park, no matter who he played. Marika Quadrembeti, Australia's best player for the last two years, hands down. Uh, and there's some other players on the uh, outskirts. Campbell Magne released. I think he had some concussion issues last year. I hope I hope that he's still playing professional rugby because he's just a, a tremendous talent and another we, player I'd love to see at any any uh, team in uh, in New Zealand. Nelson's named George Worth because he loves English people. Uh, he did play a bit for Southern Districts, and I've got to say at shoot shield level, he's a freak. So I hope <laughs> that he finds his way in uh, in professional rugby because he's a talent. And David Vessel has obviously left at the end of Super Rugby AU as well. Um, so huh. that'll be interesting to see how they transition there. If you're on social media, follow Dave Vessels because since he has left, he has become very vocal on all his opinions. And it Honestly, he, he has some very good content. Yeah, hundred percent. And and obviously, he had that um that in, the uh, interview with Rugby Fixation with Rev, yep. which was fantastic, awesome. and, and has already been called one of the best interviews of the year. So Rev just has this ability to know everything about everything and ask some very good questions. So very we're, great. We're thinking we're about podcast. replacing Kagi. Yeah. Did he learn that on this podcast, Finally. or was it? <laughs> um, all right, well, let's push on uh, the best 15 uh, before our listeners, we lose the listen, mm. our listeners to going to sleep because of how long this podcast is, but no, that's all good. No, there was always going to be um, one. Don't worry about that. People know what they're in for. That's true. All right, best 15. Uh, a t- loose head prop that Harry loves, Cameron Orr, just your stock standard, good. delivers on his uh, his role, very good at set pace. Um, the prince, that, I don't, we're not going to call him the prince that was promised anymore, are we? I don't know what we call him now, just Dang. his name, Jordan Waterley. The prince that uh, never delivered. The prince that never delivered. Uh, except he received lots of deliveries from Elastoplast because he's probably used the most tape out of any rugby player in the game. Um, and the big boy, uh, back fit, tight head, my favourite player in this team, Pone Faumosili. Uh, cannot wait to see him tear it up. I'm hoping we get another, another few of those um, kick returns where he gets that wind, 50 metre wind up. That's what I'll be yeah. hanging out for this year. Um, Matty Phillip, we've talked a lot about him. Uh, We've kind of glossed over Trevor Hosea as well. Uh, very promising young lock. Had a really good year last year into the Wallaby squad. Obviously, just developing the Wallaby squad, but um, super exciting. Uh, this is probably going to be a year he's going to make a big push forward. And speaking a bit of a big push forward, someone who had a very big one last year and is going to have to really step up in this Rebels team, Rob Leota. Um, I have been a huge Bob... I think we've all been huge Bobby Leota fans the last couple of years, but... Um, with Izzy Nasarani out and a few of the other back rowers gone, he is going to be one of the key... He's probably going to be the key man in the back row, I would say, for sure. Um, and also rounding out the back row, we've got Brad Wilkin and um, Michael Wells, uh, who I think you're both uh, pretty big fans of. Um, Michael Wells is pretty stock standard. I, that Brad no, I like Wilkin. He's, he's another overachiever, mate. I actually didn't have him in, well, in my original side, yeah. But I, I, I think he's in the running to be and not only a number eight choice, but he was a vice captain last year, has some experience. He could could, could be in that leadership group for sure. He will be. What, what about Brad Wilkin now as, as your... I, I really like Brad Wilkin. He's, he's had a few injured years. I've treated his 
mum, I think it is. Yeah, but but Archie's got good feet. Awesome relative um, podcast, mate. That's great. Um, but Jesus, Josh Kemeny's the unlucky man there. But Nelson, yeah. shall, shall, go through the back line for us. Look, we'll jump straight into the backs. We won't talk about their feet either. Joe Powell was going to cover at number nine. Excited to see more of Carter Gordon in that 10 jersey, which means we see Matt Tamua playing most of his year yet again at 12. I'm I'm not picking Lockie Anderson at um on one of the wings. I, I don't know which one of you done that. We'll find someone else to fill that role. Um <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you gotta pick someone. Hey, you say that. Right. You're gonna say he, he, he was a fantasy hack because he was a back rower as well. Look, I, it, it's a hard choice. But look, it, Andrew Callaway is going to fill one of the roles and it's probably going to be Lucky Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I, I mean, knowing the Rebels, Moses Cerebi is probably going to play one of the wing spots. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're probably going to see um, Reese Hodge at fullback. We could actually see quite a different side this year. We, we might see Callaway filling that um, fullback role. We might see... Um, Reese Hodge filling the, no, the no, centre they no role. Wingers. They got no wingers. They're not going to move. They got no outside backs. Excuse they're not going to pick Hodge and Callaway and push them inside. No, well, Tom Pincus got a role last year and have upgraded <laughs> to Joe Pincus this year. Who played some yeah, seven? This is, this is ridiculous. All right, so we've got Matt Samuel, Stacey Elliott, centre. Lockie Anderson, Andrew Callaway, Reese Hodge is the most likely outside backs. Obviously, Badogo is the. Uh, the smoky for yeah. us to see if he can get some game time. And, and actually, yeah, I was going to say it's worth shouting out. Stacey Ely, he's actually played some really good footy. In he did, yeah. I think come back to Samoa, so he's he's been getting better and better. The the other potential, which we're probably not going to see, he's going to be our, our centre. But hopefully, we get to see at least a bit of time of Jarrell Skelton filling that centre role this year. I think he's 21, 22, came into the squad as a back rower, so he was in back row last year. This year, he will be named as a centre. Who who was yeah. an awesome sevens player. So, yeah, can play anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Kagi, you got the first question there, mate. Key questions. Uh, what can a Joe Powell, Carter Gordon, halves pairing deliver for this Rebels back line? I think they're both talented players. Uh, my issue is that they're probably not up to the calibre of most other Super Rugby sides. So they'll be consistent. Carter Gordon will make some mistakes to more or will have to try and take over. Hopefully not as much as he did last year because it didn't work. Um, but, yeah, look, I, I think they'll probably struggle, to be honest, compared to the better sides in particular in Super Rugby this year. Look, I think that halfback combo of Powell, Sorovi, Tuttle, there's, there's a, a very good halfback role. The the issue is Carter Gordon, I think, is their 10 and has to be their 10. There will be those teething issues. He's young. He, uh, he's he got a lot of talent. He did some very promising things in his first couple of opportunities last year. But... Uh, Tamua is really going to have to be that stabilizing yeah, piece, right? And it just didn't work last year. It ruined Tamua's game trying to carry this well, side. And I really hope that he, yeah, man, he was awful. He, he was awful long before no, Carter was. Gordon no, played no, last year. Matt Carter Tumua, Gordon Matt played back in the legend. Year. Matt Tamua's a legend. I love Tamua, but Carter Gordon didn't play the yeah, same last year. Look, it's interesting. If, if we were if we were Queenslanders, if probably if we got Rev on here, we'd be sitting down um, hyping up Carter Gordon. There's been a lot of hype about him. It's just kind He's of, young, I feel man. like. I feel like it's gone away a little bit, uh, but w- even when it should be building, because this is his year, right? So no, he's just he's, he's just starting. He's just young, and the Rebels were disappointing last year. Mm. But I think Matt Tamura has got a big role to play in how Carter Gordon performs. Yeah, I've got yeah, a question yeah. here, guys. Mm. Last year, Murray Corabetti took I don't know how many games to score a try, but it was way way too many. Can we get good ball out to Andrew Callaway? I'm not that worried about getting good ball out to Lucky Anderson. If I'm being completely blunt and honest, Ooh. can we get good ball out to Andrew Callaway? And it seemed to be the Rebels' problem last year. Um, what do you think? Can we fix that? Well, I think we're going to struggle. Yeah. I think that's the key problem, right? We've seen how good Callaway can be as a finisher, but he's, he's got to be given that platform, given that good front, that good ball. I, I think um, we're going to struggle. Look, as, as I said, if it was up to me, I'd be finding a new winger, and it's probably Vidogu. I'd be putting... Um, someone like Reese Hodge in the centres to facilitate the ball getting wider, and I'd be giving Kellaway the opportunity at fullback to get involved into the game. For me, for me, I, I think that gets your best players involved touching the balls more often. So your wingers are Lockie Anderson, Vidogo with Kellaway at fullback. No one touches the ball on the wing <laughs> for the Rebels. Unless you put this the back one that you said, but I get it. Yep, no, fair enough. And Kagi, mate, there's some pretty <laughs> massive holes left without both Cotton Betty and Nasarani. Oh. 
It's obviously uh, going to take some big names or some big uh, shoes to fill. Who do you think is going to fill those jerseys? Well, look, I talked about before, Bobby Leota, I think, is just going to absolutely step up. And uh, he started getting, I think everyone forgets how little game time he was getting last year. He started getting more and more for the Rebels towards the end of the season, but he was still very much a bench player, whereas he's now probably the first picked in that forward pack almost. It'd probably be Matt Phillip, Rob Leota. So, um, He's going to play 80 minutes every week, be a fantastic fantasy option, I think. Um, and he's really going to, I mean, the Rebels forward pack, I think, can compete with the other forward packs in, in the Aussie conference. Um, you know, they're pretty solid there, but it's really how the Rebels' success is going to depend on can their back line do anything with it. But, uh, yeah, Robbie Leota and Matt Phillip got a lot of work to do to um, deliver that front football and get over the game line. Yep. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, I've got a question for Nelson. When will we see Jarrell Skelton? I know that you're a big fan of his. Will he get much time this year? Uh, he, he's obviously got a lot of talents, but do you think he makes that step up and becomes a household name or not? Look, I, I don't think 2022 is his year to become a household name. I, I think it's his time that we get to see him in Super Rugby. I, I, I do think we see him get some more opportunities, especially off the bench through 2022. Look, he's got Peter Beetham, one cousin, who is probably who he plays like, second cousins, um, Will Skelton. So he's got some big-name relatives. But look, I, I, he's 191 centimetres, 104 kilos, came into the squad as a flanker, now being transitioned to a centre. They don't have a lot of depth at centre, an injury or two, and, and we might see him get some big minutes. But for me, I think he's just going to get little bits and pieces. Yep, agreed. A player I really want to see some of this year, at least. I think last year we kept calling for the sevens players like Lewis Holland and Skelton. We're like, put the boys on. But um, but anyway, um, all right, let's push on then. Stocks rising. I literally just did it. I just said Rob Leota and Matt Phillip. Um, They are not only going to play 80 minutes every week because they bloody well need to, but they need to play massive roles in this team. So uh, they're going to be given a lot of rope and um, a lot of the ball. So they're they're going to be good this year. Stocks falling, Harry? Uh, mate, I, I just want to say the stat that stood out for me, Matty Phillip back in 2019, 20, 2019, yeah, it was the seventh ranked lock. The only player still in the whole competition that was there above him was Brody Retallick. So it's Who? fair to, yeah, exactly. So it's fair to say that Matt Phillip could be anything for the locks in fantasy footy this year. Could be big. And I think growing. Yeah, stocks falling. Kobus Ilof, Kobus, uh, he's a big fan favourite, obviously, but I think Pone coming back into the squad will hurt him. Josh Kemeny, uh, again, <clears throat> could be anything. I just think that they, the Michael Wells been probably voted as, I think, the forward of the entire team, maybe even player of the entire team last year. is going to hurt his chances. Then Rob Liotta, uh coming through for the Wallabies, he, he's going to struggle to get as much game time. So I think both those guys will struggle. I think we could yeah. say with Kemeny that uh, Leota's got that six six jersey locked down. So Kemeny would be playing eight if he's playing. And yeah, yeah. he'd be trying to get it after Michael Wells. Yeah, it's probably fair. Look, he, he can cover seven as well as he has in the past. But well, he's playing not, six for the Rebels the most, actually. That's what he's playing. Yeah. I think, so. He's not a traditional seven. And when we jump across into the Smokies, look, Carter Gordon, we touched on him before. Look, one of the big issues for him as a fantasy player, you're picking a 10, you want to pick someone who's going to be kicking. When they've got the likes of Tamua, the, the likes of Hodge in your squad, we're not going to get to see him necessarily as the out-and-out kicker. Um, unless they're trying to really fill that confidence role for him to, to help build him into that role. So for, for me, he has a high ceiling, whether we see this year or not. That's what the risk is, hence he's a smoky. But he's an exciting player with a big future. Um, he wants to be a Wallabies player. And, I mean, he's he's got a shout to be that third option in, in 2023, so he's going to have to have a big year in 2022. We've got Ilakani Vidogu. Sorry, Kagi, I was looking at is you, it, mate. It's getting late or something, isn't it? Yeah, you're always distracting me. But look, he was in the seven squad uh, as, as a member of that team, impressed in the Fijian under-20s. We just don't see him uh, as a likely starter for this Fijian side. If he gets time, if there's a couple injuries, he could be a really exciting player. But we didn't just we didn't get to see enough of him in 2021 to think that we're going to see him this season break out. To Marty Ioani. I mean, if you've got the name Ioani, that's always that's exciting. Um, big number eight coming That's what qualified him for that section, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, big, 
I did have to justify by saying it wasn't just his name. It was about 75% his name. Uh, and, then, and then the stats, um, yeah, he's 24 he, years old, 6'4", 119 kilos. I went and looked up some of his highlights, absolute wrecking ball. And he's come through the system in Canberra, the Vikings, and then the Brumbies Academy. Um, look, I mean, they've lost Nazarani. Yes, they've got Bobby Leota, but if they want to, if they want to double up, if you want Leota and another wrecking ball to Marty Iwani in uh, their number eight, very unlikely to see it, but could be cool. Either that or Pone will push back to number eight. 